and welcome. My name is Stephanie and I'm so excited that you could join me today. Our project that we're working on is this cute photo block set and it is a perfect way to be able to display some of your favorite pictures. First of all, let's go through the contents of your kit. You will have received two wooden blocks as well as a wooden base. You will have a vinyl word as well as a bottle of Mod Podge and a bottle of paint, a foam brush, and you also will have a sheet of sandpaper. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we'll be doing is painting the wooden blocks and the base. What I like to do is water down my paint a little bit so that instead of it there being this thick coat of paint, it's just more of a wash. So I have added some paint just in a little dish and I have put water in my brush and I'm just adding that to the paint to thin it down a little bit. When you have it the consistency that you want it to be, you can just start painting it onto your block. Now keep in mind that the more water you add is obviously going to be a thinner paint and a, and a lighter color once it's painted onto your block. It also is going to take a little longer to dry if you get it too wet, so just keep that in mind. You can make it however thick or thin you want it to be. When I paint, I go with the grain of the wood. Now we'll be placing photos in the center of each of these blocks, so you don't necessarily need to paint the whole entire block, but it's easier for me to just paint the whole thing, so I'm just going to go over all of it. I'll do a few of the sides and let it dry while I'm working on the other block. Look carefully, make sure you don't have any drips on your sides, and then you can set it aside to dry. I have painted both of the blocks and the base, and I have allowed them to dry. And so now the next step will be to sand the corners and the edges of the blocks to give it a little shabby chic look. Now keep in mind that the photos are going to go in the center of the block, so we don't need to sand the flat surfaces. The only thing that will be showing will be the edges. I have taken my sheet of sandpaper and I have torn it into quarters and then I'm just going to fold one of these quarters in half so that it gives something to grip. You don't want to cut the sandpaper with your scissors because it will dull them, so just tear it until you have the size that fits you best. And then we're just going to start one edge at a time and just sand until as much of the wood is showing through as you want. We're just sanding a little bit of the paint away from the edges. So you have some paint showing still and some of the wood showing through. Okay, so I have now distressed both blocks as well as the base. And I hope that you can see here how the paint has been sanded away from the edges just a little bit, just enough to give it kind of a distressed look. Okay, the next thing that we are going to be doing is attaching our photos. Now the blocks are three and a half inches square, so I have made my photos three inches square so that when they're laid on the block, you can see a bit of a border showing as well as a distressed edge. So we are going to go ahead and use Mod Podge to attach the photos to all the sides of the block. So I am just using the same brush that I've rinsed the paint out of, and I'm just going to apply the Mod Podge with the foam brush. Now one thing that you want to make sure of when working with Mod Podge is that you apply enough because Mod Podge dries very quickly so you want not a really thin coat because it dries really fast, but you don't want a really thick coat either, 
or it's going to cause some bubbling and dripping. So um, just paint on and you have to work kind of quickly because it dries so fast. Once I have my layer of Mod Podge, I'm going to place my photo in the center of the block. And you want to make sure that there are no air bubbles underneath the photograph. So you want to make sure that all of it, the middle, the edges, everything is secure on the block or you will end up with a big bubble underneath and you'll be unhappy with your project. Now you don't have to Mod Podge over the top of the photo if you don't want because it can just act as a glue to stick your photo to the base. However, it's kind of hard not to get it on the surface as you're working and sometimes your edges might peel up too. So I prefer to put a coat over the top. It just seals everything in nicely and it also protects your photos, especially since you will be turning your blocks pretty often to display your different photos. So just carefully um, paint on a layer of Mod Podge over the top. And we will be doing this to five sides of each block. I'm not going to put photos on the bottom because that will just be resting on the base. If you want to do that, you can. But I have just made 10 photos for my project. So again, we're just going to paint on another layer and just keep adding the photos. You'll need to let them dry in between. This is the hard part is the waiting for it to dry. So I will do that to my two photo blocks and then we will be right back. Okay, we're back and I have finished my blocks. I have added photos to all the sides except for the bottom. As I mentioned earlier, I chose not to put photos on the bottom, but I have Mod Podged over the top of all of them and have allowed it to dry. And I'm really happy with the way that they turned out. I really like them. So the next step is to add the vinyl word to the base. So when you're working with vinyl, you need to have something to apply the vinyl with. And today I'll be using a popsicle stick because it's a small word that we're doing. The first thing you want to do is burnish the surface. And this just makes sure that the vinyl letters are sticking to the top layer of transfer paper instead of to the bottom layer. So you just need to rub a little bit until you feel like you've covered all the spots. And then we're just going to peel away the backing and do it carefully to make sure that the letters aren't sticking to the back. You want them to stick to the transfer paper that is on the top. And make sure that you aren't touching the actual letters themselves. You just want to hang on to the transfer paper. Okay, so once that's peeled away, we can just place it on the block. Make sure that you don't have any stray sawdust from sanding your block. And we are just going to lay the vinyl word where we want it so that it's centered. Now the transfer paper is just a little bit sticky, which works great because you can attach it where you want it to go and don't have to worry about the word moving as you're rubbing the letters off. So when you have it where you want it, just take your popsicle stick again and rub over the top of the letters, making sure that you have all the corners especially and just work on each letter at a time until you're sure that it is stuck to the wood. Okay, when you feel that you have got all of the corners, carefully peel up one edge of the transfer paper and just peek to make sure that the letter is stuck to the wood and then just carefully peel the transfer paper back. Do it a little slowly so that if for some reason there's an edge not attached that you can lay it 
the transfer paper back down and rub over the top of it with the popsicle stick a little bit more. Okay, great, that looks great. Now you'll probably want to Mod Podge over the top of this, not because the vinyl needs it to stay on there, but just so that it matches the finish on your blocks. So once you have Mod Podged over the base, then your project is finished. I hope you've enjoyed this project. Thank you very much for joining me today.